All right, I'm just going to get into it to get today for you guys and do my best to explain my thought process throughout this game. At the start of the game, you're just going to buy whatever pairs you can find, right? And I don't know. This set is going to be really big on fundamentals, guys. Like, you're really going to be good at making gold interest in this case because with them increasing the barrier to each level, meaning increasing the gold... It's going to be really important that you guys make Econ and Force making gold over just greeting for stuff. Opening up, you're just going to want to make your strongest board. You know, creating a frontline backline combination. In this case, we have 80 items. And we have a good frontline. I'll pause it here for these. So at 2 1, you guys kind of want to choose augments that don't railroad the rest of your game, right? So if you go with consistency, you're more often than not going to force a lose streak. You're not always going to want to do this. At level 9, gain 44 gold, you might as well not even take this as an augment because it's so shit. The amount of gold it takes to hit in level 9, you'll never reach this power spike, right? And you could always just take Light and Forge, gain an Ornite item anvil after 7 player combats. And I'm pretty sure I'm just going to go with this one. One, because I wanted to try out the new, um, like, Orn hero power, whatever it is. And we're going to level up here on 2-1, like you're supposed to, following standard leveling. And we're just going to get in the Dead Eye Synergy. So we have a frontline backline combination here. And we're in a good spot. There's not much more to say. Here we're just going to be looking to finish off whatever item we can for action. Um, looking at scaling, he's all AD, so getting an early game death blade, I thought with his ability at one shot. You can tell with the double BF sword, it's just a lot of damage. His ability basically already like 9 tenths the HP bar, so I figured with this it'd push it over. And 2-5 is another standard leveling block here, you're going to see everybody just do this naturally. However, when you go level 6 in this game, guys, it won't always be on 3-2. You know, it might be 3-5. There's a lot of other instances now with how much, with them increasing gold, it's going to change leveling a whole lot, which changes the t pay, uh, pace and tempo of the game, which will affect which augments are meta, which um, hero augments, you know, as well are meta. Like, I heard Mordog do an interview recently where he talked about how in North America, Vladimir is really popular due to the strong hero augments in north america but i believe it's in china twisted fate reigns supreme where they care more about the early game get, building gigabis items as well right
I would say NA's region's more for like high and wide boards, whereas other regions kind of focus on reroll comps a whole lot more. And taking also like the wonky hero, wonky augments like built different, things like that. I'm trying out each of the heroes before I commit to playing one. And I Bebe, who's a Twitch streamer, the guy's challenger, he made a really good point that the Poro, which doesn't offer you these hero augments, is actually probably better due to the fact that the quality of the augments now offered for just individual random augments are better than what you can like hope to see out of something else. I think the there's certain hero augments that are good for like railroading you for comps, right? Like, if you're an OTP, they're really good for you. Like, the new Lee Sim one, a lot of his augments are based off, like, re-rolling, so it's going to be perfect for Yordles, right? And here, I rolled a little bit because I wanted to see if I could hit one of these pairs. I'm sitting on Jin Pair, Poppy Pair. I'm on a 5 streak. I want to try to keep it. And as you can see here, if you look at the right hand side, we could, we're going to fight Bonnie XX or XOXO, who I thought. So that's why we power leveled here on the 3 1 because we were 5 streak and we want to keep the streak. We're just going to take all the Orin upgrades, guys. I'm not going to be going over the other augments too much because I just wanted to see how good it was, right? Pandora's box giving a component right now. We don't got a whole lot to work with, right? But I wanted to just to see because I've tried the Vigar where I only take Vigars and all this other stuff to see if there's any like cookie cutter Gigabis, right? And at this point, you guys should notice this, that I overrolled like a mofo. So don't make the mistake I just made, right? Because I could easily lose this fight here and nuke my whole econ, and then I'd be out of the game, right? So this is what I was talking about, having like really healthy habits. It's really important in this set. Does it go from level 6 to 7? It's 40. Here's another thing guys, don't pop the anvil here on 3-3, hold off on the anvil until after you hit your carousel so you can make the best choice, you know. There's all these like small little things I could have did to improve my odds of winning and shit, so, you know, it's not a micromanaging game, but when you get to the higher levels, you just want to have really good fundamentals, like that. that's a whiff there and a half, because this means I could just pick a random item. I, the reason why I popped the anvil is I kind of also wanted to know what I had to look for on the carousel. Because having this large rod playing Deadeye, where all of your damage dealers are AD, you're only left with a few options of what you can really do with it. Also, you guys, like, I'm kind of grading to get max value out of this Randowans. But one thing to note, you guys don't want to be left side when you play a comp like this. For whatever reason, you want to be right side with that further hex in the corner. But you'll realize me do this all the time. You're going to want to have the... This is just like, you know, past traumas from past sets. You're going to want to have the Jin or another one of these Deadeyes on the far right corner. 
because there's always units that throw abilities to the farthest edge, like Sona, things like that, which I don't know if they rework Sona from past sets, but it's just good practice not have all your eggs in one basket in the corner, where now some of the units on the left side will trail off to the left towards Jin, and I won't have all the, you know, you know, Gordon Ramsay's heat in the kitchen on the right side, you know what I'm trying to say? And at this point, I was thinking of slamming double lock it, guys, but it's just not worth it. Because the positioning right now with this random wind is already a headache enough as it is. So I was like, okay, I gotta kill these components. I was just gonna slam Bramble. Worst comes worse, I put decap on Cassid into, which this is like an instance where you guys don't get Gigabus and you just gotta make do with what you got, right? As you guys can see, as you just get new units, you just fully pivot out and you just start taking the higher tier units and getting rid of the lower tiers. And this is why I tell you guys not to overroll and fixate on getting upgrades. Just take the game and, you know, take what it gives you and just do the best you can, right? And slowly pivot into the higher tiers because lower tier units don't matter anyways. We still hold on to the Ash. At this point, I was conf like convinced we were going for Action 3. Also, I had to lear learn how to do this, this masterwork upgrade. So I just put on the action to make one of these items and the, the, the death blade's always just gonna be better. Because the Hodge is only gonna be a little bit more increased healing, it's not gonna really matter all that much. Because of the dead eye scaling, right? It scales off percentage AD. So what gives the more flat AD? The death blade. And you see how we're not rolling for action 3 on here on 7, we're just taking the game as it gives us. It costs a lot of gold to hit your new levels, so we're just going to level off our interest. We have 59 HP, we're not worried. We're not going to be taking big losses here. we're pivoting over to the Frey Lords. it's because it gives you the sunder and it's like free shred so you don't you're not getting railroaded this set into making like a last whisper so you really are just kind of able to um just slam these items on aphelios it's just three damaging items and you, you see we're gonna not roll too deep we're just gonna try to pivot here into our best board we possibly can
you guys can see I want to put the gun blade there on Urgot, but there's no point in me doing that. Because one, if we hit like another AoE item, we kind of want to put that on the Urgussi. And we don't want to put that on, um, you know, Action. Because then, the, you know, the positioning's tough enough as it is with this double random ones. And as you guys can see, as I'm playing this game, I'm really, my board is never that weak, right? We just slowly pivot using our Ecom, we use the free upgrades we get, and we just try to make the best max cab board we can. But you gotta think about it in the game, you know, TFT is a slow game, especially if you streak, and you don't want to throw away free wins, right? Like, 50 HP is a lot of HP, you can tell the lobby's coming to an end, people are, like, all inning, they got a lot of gold out on their board. But just take your time, man. Breathe. Realize you got 50 gold or 50 HP and like 60 gold right now. Just make the best decisions you can make to try to close out the game to win, right? So is your win angle here? Is it um, re-rolling and hitting Aphelios 3 on 8? Is it going 9 and getting in another legendary? You know? And I started reading the uh, like items here. I was like, okay, Sunder. I was like, alright, Ash hits more of the board than... um. Urgot or Action does, so maybe with her Reign of Arrows, she'll be able to shred enough units for Aphelios, and that's why I same-sided her as Aphelios. That way they both target the same units, and they're able to get through the whole board quicker. And I hear I didn't naturalize enough Aphelioses, so I just decided to go 9 when I had the double pair. Plus getting double Randuins on, you know, Scion that set is Giga Broken. Because he already has a ton of HP because of Bruiser, and now he gains all the resistances as well. And I figured that, you know, I could probably still hit Aphelios 3 on 9, but I'm really banking on hitting Sedge here, Scion. And that's why we don't roll down anymore, because when this next combat will make 10 gold, and we might be able to hit Sedge as well. You need a lot of gold, or you need a Nico, or you need a um you need a high roll quite a bit of a like a four cost. For you to be able to go for a three star four cost. If not, you end up like this guy, he's like 50 gold waiting for like to go nine to be able to get Kale level, like uh her like three star evolution, which I think she did have it there. I don't know. You look pretty bedazzled. And at this time, you guys are going to see me frontlining my units a bit more. And I do this on purpose because when I'm fighting the Teemo, and people don't... Like, positioning's important, guys. So I don't want this Teemo to keep AoE hitting my whole board with his mushrooms. So I put all my beefcake units up front so they're going to take the brunt of the damage. As you can see, the chip damage is really messing up my Aphelios. Uh, 
It was just a quick little one. I didn't want to micromanage this commentary, but hope you guys have a good day. And I think this is going to be the highest win, win rate comp of the new set. Anyways, have a lovely day.